So hello, and, and thanks for joining us for this replay of our recent real-time market data in the cloud session, held at Equinix's NY5 data center in Secaucus, New York. I'm Phil Griston, an Alliance Director at Equinix, and I'll be your host for today as we join by presenters from AWS and Exigy to talk through an exciting new approach to extending cloud services into low latency architectures. Over the next 30 minutes or so, You'll see in here why we believe that this group of companies is uniquely positioned to offer an innovative and compelling service that's replicable in any of the world's financial markets. Shortly, I'll hand over to Jim Codis, principal SA from AWS, to talk about the AWS components of this solution. Then I'll return briefly to talk about the part that Equinix plays through platform Equinix, consisting of over 240 highly interconnected and globally distributed data centers, we interconnect thousands of organizations across the digital first world, offering unbridled core network optimization, interconnection, and cloud adjacent edge services, including co-location and secure private networking for your ecosystem partners. Finally, the star of the show, Jason Murphy, principal product manager at Exergy, will take us through the unique value proposition being brought to this solution and a demo, showing you why we're so excited about the solution. So with no further ado, let me hand you to Jim. Thanks, Phil. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, I'd like to take a minute and discuss the value proposition of the solution, um, where a lot of technology is currently moving to the cloud. Uh, for financial markets, they still operate primarily out of uh, individual exchange data centers and facilities. Uh, and knowing that having proximity to those data centers and facilities uh, is, is paramount for any financial institution. Uh, yet, from a benefit perspective, they want to use a common control plane. Uh, people want to leverage cloud technology, the APIs, the manageability of it. Um, they want to lower their infrastructure um, costs and manageability. Uh, they want faster access time to the various markets, um, all the things that currently can take place in the cloud. Uh, now we want to extend closer to those uh, data center sources. Additionally, we want to take advantage of um, really what market data makes sense based on our strategies, uh, whether that's level one through level three. Uh, having that opportunity uh, can make the difference in any company's strategies. Uh, we want to be able to easily expand the geographies, right? Wherever the markets are, we want to be able to participate in. Uh, and last, we want to be able to store history uh, and run analytics in the cloud. Um, being able to take the data and, 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 and persist it there. Okay, this slide represents the AWS ecosystem that we have really for financial services. On the left, you can see various data sources, alternative data, batch historical data, real-time streaming data. Moving across the screen, we can see a suite of connectivity products we have that allow you to transition that data, transform that data, uh, move it into persistent storage on S3, uh, followed by a suite of analytic services, um, everything from uh, straight business analytics to AI and ML, uh, followed by the personas that it suits. This demonstration focuses on the real-time streaming data, um, where right now we see an opportunity in the market uh, to provide a better service. The services that we have today are typically heavily conflated um, and reduced uh, to really what the cloud can sustain um, based on its, its, its current structure um, and distance to these sources. For our solution today, we're using um, AWS Outposts. Uh, some of you may be familiar with Outposts, um, recognizing the full uh, AWS cabinet solution, uh, which is literally bringing our technology uh, to your data center floor. Uh, for this demonstration, we're using our server product. Uh, we have two form factors for the server product. We have one and two use servers. And these are specifically suitable for really edge compute. A um, couple of things unique about the server. One is it has uh, a standard AWS Nitro side, 
that connects it up to the region, provides all the manageability, all the APIs that you would support out of the region, allows you to control and work with it um, through the console or through whatever deployment tools you want. But equally importantly, it has a separate independent um, local network interface that allows it to connect to your on-premise network uh, or your hosting provider's network, uh, receive raw multicast feeds, um, literally take advantage of um, the cross connects and what you have on-prem. Most of these, whether it's receiving market data or whether it's serializing orders are serialized type IO, which means typically you're one-to-one, -one, two-to-one with whatever the venue is that you're dealing with. With that, let me pass it back to Phil. Thanks, Jim. So why are we proposing you locate these outpost servers at Equinix? Well, the short answer is proximity. The world's financial ecosystem, including exchanges and their trading partners, already live at Equinix. So for over the last 25 years, we've led the way in ensuring easy access to both this ecosystem and the best technology to connect to them with. We provide secure managed locations with fast, uh, reliable interconnection to both trading partners and to the clouds, global networks and internet gateways that you need to minimize latency and ensure reliability. More cloud on-ramps, network service providers, and financial exchanges are available on platform Equinix than anywhere else. With over 240 interconnected data centers, we can provision this anywhere in the world. We can provide the platform you need where you need it. And we can connect you with using the latest in networking technologies. So with global capabilities, the three partners here can deploy this solution for you anywhere that you need it and replicate that, ensuring that you've got consistency uh, across your global infrastructure. So now let's get to the start of the show with a demo. Jason. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Jim. Uh, XSG was thrilled to be chosen to be uh, the market data provider uh, for this exciting demo. Uh, XSG has been a leading provider of low latency market data solutions uh, for many years. Historically, those solutions have been, you know, on-prem dedicated environment uh, for each client. Um, XSG is now providing that same quality and reliability of data through our market data service uh, applications with our Axiom product line. Clients get the same performance and reliability of a dedicated XSG solution, but at the cost of, of a mutualized service. Um, we've extended that with this set up here to be market data in the cloud. Uh, this is XG's Axiom plus AWS Outpost, allows clients the full capability of the cloud with the on-prem uh, latencies that you come to expect. So for today, in Axiom, uh, we have an AWS options live today. Um, we have our Axiom mutualized ticker plant living in Equinix NY2. Most of our clients just cross connect over to us and run their trading applications locally. Uh, we do have a variety of clients that take that data from NY2 over an AWS Direct Connect and run those trading applications or calculation applications, whatever you need in AWS. The downside of that, of course, is you're adding that latency of moving from New York uh, to Northern Virginia. For the setup that we're running today, we've moved things around a little bit. For the demo architecture here, we have the XG Axiom environment living in the NY2 cage. We have a single mode 10 gig cross connect over to NY5 and the outpost is living in NY5. So we have that cross connect lands, top of rack switch, the environment side we'll say of the outpost server lives on the same switch in NY5. The control plane lives back in standard AWS out of the other network port on the outpost. I do want to point out in the lower left, um, you could connect a dedicated XG appliance directly to the outpost or in the same switch um, if you wanted even better performance. Uh, we've just not done that here. We think the, the ease of go to market for customers um, and you know, time to deployment uh, is better with the Axiom solution here. Okay, that was enough slides. Um, let's talk about a demo for a second. So we've got two demonstrations we're gonna run today. Uh, they're both gonna use the Opera data feed 
um, we felt that opera um, gave us what we needed. Everyone knows the volumes of opera. Uh, XG records tens of terabytes a day of opera that we provide through AWS to the consolidated audit trail. Uh, so we're already dealing with opera in AWS. We're just now extending that to a live service. So for our first demonstration, we've got normalized opera data delivered via Axiom consumed by an XG API application. That application is run and lives on the Outpost server. And we're just going to display that live data up to the AWS console. The second demonstration um, is less flashy, but more important. Uh, this is running an Exigy cache on the Outpost server in NY5 and redistributing that data to a Kubernetes cluster living up in main AWS. So over to a demo. So here you can see that I have my uh, standard AWS console. Um, and we click into some EC2 instances here. We've actually got six instances running on this account, and we're going to look at one of them specifically. We have the XG demo instance here. Uh, it looks like a standard eight extra large uh, EC2 instance, and it actually lists its availability zone as US East 1. So you have to tie these outpost servers to a region, even though they're not physically located in that region. So I've got another console up here just to save us the connection time. Um, we're not fancy with naming, so demo one is just demo. We'll see what we get out of this. Okay, pause here. Okay, what we're looking at here, we've got option symbols on the left-hand side. So this is Amazon call option with a strike price of 125. Uh, we've got bid price and size, ask price and size, last sale price and size, and then we've got event count, and latency. This latency is in microseconds. So as you can see here, we're getting hundreds of microseconds out um, with this setup, and we're very happy with that. Uh, we've got other symbols here, Tesla, NVIDIA. We picked some symbols that today are quite active to show what's going on. Um, in this demonstration, uh, green represents a positive price change, red a negative, and white would just be size changes for these. Um, I'm going to run this again just uh, just to let it run for a second for everybody because it's pretty quick. And then we'll move on to the second demo. So we do get some of the latencies that hop up into the millisecond range, but most are staying in the hundreds of micros. Um, we're very, again, very happy with that. Letting some data stream for a second. Okay. That one was fun and flashy, but I think the next one is the one that's actually a bit more important for this kind of setup. So what we've got in this one is an Exigy gateway that is subscribing to a variety of symbols. This gateway is providing data to a Kubernetes cluster in the cloud. So all we're showing here is just event count per second coming through and some data rates coming through. The point here is that we're running the cache locally on the outpost server and feeding that data to a Kubernetes cluster. So what I'm gonna do next is look at the logs from that Kubernetes cluster and just show some events that have come through recently. Oh, and it happened again. <laughs> Let me grab the actual data that's there and make sure that I'm getting the proper, uh... there we go. Okay. This is just some log output to show you that we're getting the same kind of information coming through here. We're running, in this case, 10 instances. Um, so you've got quote, this is a quote coming through, um, symbol, bid price and size, ask price and size, you know, that kind of thing. Nothing too interesting here other than the fact that this is running in main AWS and we're feeding it up top. Uh, in this case, we're running 10 10 different instances of the subscribing application. We have run this uh, larger up to hundreds and actually a thousand. Um, not a great way to show that uh, through a demonstration like this. Um, I hope this helps you understand uh, what these three companies can provide you today um, when we work together to get live market data in the cloud. I believe we've got one more slide. I'll hop back over to now.
Mm-hmm. Great. Th- thanks, Jason. <laughs> yeah, appreciate it. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate you spending your time with us and hope you found that the demo, the demo was interesting. If you'd like to know more about the solution, here are some additional resources that you can access. And, and also, you know, please feel free to reach out to any of us or your local representative from any of the three companies uh, to talk about how we can help you achieve your business goals. Again, thanks for joining us and have a great day.